Blessed be the Lord of a rock. Oh, yeah. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul.
classics so. and we sing to the ancient of days. Big and become 
The point is, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God like the woman that hid the yeast in the, in the, in the thing to, to, uh, to make the bread. And what the point he's making is the kingdom. You know that kind of way? <laughs> Especially if we're, when trouble is not going away, to let God hurry up. Jesus take the wheel. You ever hear people say that? Jesus take the wheel? That song has made Christians who are lazy already even more lazy. Jesus take the wheel. There is something called human responsibility. Yeah? Now you can do more than pray after you have prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. And you, on one side, you got those who don't pray at all. So, you know, um, faith without works is dead. So they, they are works. The other part of them, now, there's nothing more things wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. But they don't put their hands and get it dirty and nothing. They're praying all the time. And the other one works in all the time. And both are on opposite sides. And both swear that they're right. And both are half right. Partially correct. But have you ever seen a one wing plane? <laughs> <laughs> they got money. It's not going to go very far. All the planes that I've been in, they had them two wings. Planes of different sizes. You are the influencer. I'm going to bang that all year. So you might as well get fed up with it one time. So, you know, when you get fed up with something, then it doesn't bother you after that. You're already fed up with it. So, oh, oh okay. You are the influencer. Did, did I say at the beginning, you are the light, and darkness has to run every time from light? You are the influencer. He's saying, wherever you go, wherever you go, all right, you living on a tourist island and you're working in the in the whatever and they're serving liquor, but you're not participating in it, but you have to take the liquor to whoever is buying it. You, you take the liquor to them with with light. And they ask him, oh, who's that? Who's that person there? Oh, they're different. You got that right. You're supposed to be an influencer wherever you go. No, I'm saying influence for good now, okay? You guys are Christians. They influence you, yes. <laughs> oh, glory to God. See, I'm an influencer. I'm an influencer. Now, influence is so powerful that even in a perfect environment, Jesus said, I can call legions of angels. Legions, they can with plenty, thousands. And they'll come and tear this tongue up, tongue up. You're not taking my life. I'm laying it down. I am laying down my life. Pilate, you're not taking my life from me. I'm laying it down. But I could call how many angels they'll come. So the point being, the angels have to be very numerous for Jesus to make a statement of that nature. There are billions of angels, minimum billions of angels. But I'm still talking about influence. And in a perfect environment, with God's throne present on the sides of the north. Lucifer is walking amongst the angels, telling them that he wants a throne like God's throne, but he will put his higher. And if he were God, he would do a better job than God. How many of you know people like that? Look, it doesn't matter what you do and how good you are at doing it, there's always somebody who thinks they can do a better job. It's, 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 just, it's just one of those things. I can do a better job than she. I can sing a better song than he. I can, you know, they can do a better job. So God puts Michael on him. Michael the Archangel, Gabriel the Archangel, Lucifer the Archangel. She the top rank. He didn't influence Michael or Gabriel, but the other angels and creatures and whoever else one out of every three followed Lucifer. Say, yes, let's do that. Did I say that it happened in a perfect environment? Yes. It's not in some wrong shop, you know. It happened in heaven. Where the Almighty God is present. His throne is not too far. And in his presence, Lucifer planning a coup. But it's not about planning the coup. It's about the influence. That's the part I'm mentioning here. You can use your influence for a lot of things. You can use your influence a lot of things. All of us have influence. Even when you think you don't have any, you, you, you don't know. You don't know the half of it. You don't know. In fact, most of the times, we don't know how much we have. We think of ourselves 
very small. Most of us, Caribbean people are like that, you know, humble, meaning, you know, don't say too much about yourself. Then you come out to North America and you find people. You don't tell them what you're qualified in doing, they're not going to hire you. So you have to literally sell yourself. Self praise is no recommendation. Is that what we were taught back home? Yeah. Self praise is no recommendation. <laughs> you think you get a job with that attitude out here? And sometimes you, you're ashamed to tell people that you you got these degrees, but you do have the you do have the qualification. So you have to say it. You have to write it. Mm -hmm. I'm a people person. I work easy. I get along easy with people. I don't need supervisor to be hanging over me to get things done. All of that is true. But if you don't say it, you're not hired. You're literally like a prostitute on the block selling yourself. Hey, mister, you're doing nothing? <laughs> well, none of you have been propositioned by these people. <laughs> I was at this place with this woman, mister, mister. I thought the person was lost or something. Mister, I like, turn and look at the creature and say, hey, hey, Satan, you're bad like that. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is way up here and, and way down there, we say you're doing nothing. Man, I hurry out to that place. Name <laughs> me for Jesus. I got in trouble in the first church that I planted at uh, Rutherford Road there, that church. Mm -hmm. So the, the van broke down and I pull into this place and I push the van and park it to the front there. And I am there now waiting to call somebody. Brother Brown showed up. Brother Brown, the mm -hmm. keyboard guy. Alpheus Brown. So he said to me, Reverend, what in God's name are you doing here? I said, the van broke down. He said, here? I said, yeah. So I wonder what is he panicking about? The van broke down. I had to push it. So I put it in neutral and push it into the place there. And guess where I put her? <laughs> One of these strip giant players. He said, look, look at it. Look at it, and I turn around, there's two naked, half naked women think they're advertising this, this trip, John. He said, Pastor, you know what's good for you? <laughs> Get out of the dance. <laughs> I, had to get that, I had to push that van across to the other side, and to the other side until I got away from it. Lord have mercy. Influence, 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 influence. We all have it. Influence, we all have it. Influence. And in 2022, I'm going to be influencing everyone that comes into myspace.com for the benefit and good of the kingdom of God. I'm going to use my influence. I'm storing up my influence. Say, me too. Me, me too. too. Yes. Let's stand together. We're going to go to God in prayer. I'm going to use our influence this year. Everybody else is using theirs. Look at what Bill Gates has done with his influence. He's all over the world buying up all the agricultural land and buying up all the seeds and trying to craft laws to make it illegal for you to own a pumpkin seed, Brother Dave, Gates want that to be illegal. Only he must own seed. This man is trying to create a crisis in the world with regard to hunger, kill off people. Mm. Imagine to own seeds, they want to make it a crime. You wouldn't believe that. Last week, our Bible is a myth now. Eh? How many of you know that? Now look at me, I'm not picking a fight here. I'm just telling you the world you're living in. And I'm telling you that in this world, with all that darkness, you have influence. Amen. Amen. There is no scenario in scripture where Satan overcome God or overcome the world. The kingdoms of this world yeah, shall become what? Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, and? It's Christ. And what else? And he shall... How long? Forever. How long? Forever. It's only he reigning forever. All these things that they're doing now is temporary and it cannot overcome the church. This is what I want you to get. Did Jesus say it? He said, look, you see all this stuff what they're doing? Don't worry them. I will build my church. And who? The gates of what? Shall, not prevail. shall prevail? No. So, you know, when you hear me say these things, you, you qualify it by saying, all that he's saying there, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. Shall not prevail. Amen. That's just the way it is. Yes. We are the yeast up in here. You do all that you want. Your dope cannot influence my yeast. Mm -hmm. I got more swell than you. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling my brother? Mm -hmm. And you're not being boastful when you sing it. You gotta, we gotta, look. Hey, come on now. 
You're the darkness, I'm the light. Darkness can't put out light. Since when darkness can put out light? You're the tasteless, I'm the salt. I add flavor, I create thirst. Huh? Is that what I do? Mm -hmm. I melt ice when the place is all cold, everybody mad and upset. You walk in there, whistling Dixie, name of Jesus. They see you come in, we're glad you come, sister. You brighten up this place when you come. I'm the light around here. Amen. I'm the salt around here. Amen. I have favor. I melt ice. Nobody will be slipping and falling when I'm around. Why? Because I got that Amen. melting factor. All is oozing all over me. Are you feeling the brother now? Yes. Oh, glory to God. And when I come, I prevent decay. Nothing is going to rot and get stink around here because I'm going to sprinkle my salt. You can't funk up my atmosphere. I am the salt. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, pastor, they cuss him. Let them cuss. Their conscience is prickled. They're small-minded. They don't have a, a better vocabulary than to cuss. Let them cuss. Your cousin can't stop my life. Your cousin can't stop my shine. Your cousin can't douse my flame. Are you feeling it, brother? Mm -hmm. I am the influencer around here. Mm. Say amen to that. Amen. Don't let your job frighten you every Monday morning. You're about to get a heart attack. Are you going back to that sinful place? They should be afraid. I got to go see that light again. It's shining in my eye. I got to go taste that salt again. I can't be blind around him. I've got to go feel that swell again. He's like, yeast, man. How are we going to get rid of her? How are we going to get rid of him? We are the light of the world. We are the influencer. Say yes! I'm setting the stage for the preacher to come. You know, the way you preach, you got to get a warm platform. You can't have a cold place. They run the thing down when it's dead and rigor mortis, suck it, eat and gone home. Then they had a unit serve it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. We are salt. We are light. We are yeast. We are the influencing factor on this planet because that's what the kingdom of God is like. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We have some children among us that are the heritage of the Lord. Say yes to that. Yes. They are like arrows in the hands of a mighty man. Say yes to that. Yes. And today we are going to let one arrow loose. We're going to aim and aim and aim and suddenly let the arrow fly. Are you there? Yes. Put your hands together for the reverend, the right, the one, the only. He's not waiting for the next one. He's stepping right up. Mr. Ross! Clap your hands, all you people, and shout out the God and the God of God. Man of God, pull the zip. <laughs> it's going to be hot up in here. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Family, pleasure to share with you today my message. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. We know it will. My message is titled, Don't Look Back. Yeah. Yeah. I ask you to turn to Genesis 19, verse 22 to 26. Genesis 19, 22 to 26. Don't turn back. Don't look back. Amen. Amen. Verse 22. Haste thee, escape to thee, for I cannot do anything till thou come to thee. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind, as she became a pillar of salt. In the, first few in the first few verses of this chapter, we see two angels are sent from heaven by God to save Lot and his family from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. They had to leave everything behind and move forward into a new place with the help of God. As a new year begins, God has planned a new beginning for us. For us to thank him for bringing us through the trials and tribulations of 2021 and moving us forward into greater things. We have to thank him for blessing us and protecting us while so much was happening to the rest of the world. In Numbers 14, verse 4 to 8. And they said to one another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, 
which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Moses had sent out 12 spies to search the promised land. 10 of them came back with a negative report on how the people living in the land were giants and it brought fear to the people. The Israelites who had been wandering in the desert were tired and wanted to go back to what they knew, which was being slaves in Egypt. Uh -huh. They moaned and complained to Moses and to each other to the point where they just wanted to appoint a new leader and head back to Egypt. They doubted God's plan for them because it was taking too long. They were scared and did not know exactly what lied ahead, so they wanted to turn back. Sometimes in life, it feels more comfortable to stay in your current position or go back to the old and familiar rather than go on to something greater because you are scared of the unknown. You might not think that you are qualified for a new promotion or that you are skilled enough to try something new. However, you must remember that our God is always with us to carry us through and that if he plans something better for us, it's our job to fulfill it. He is the one who was, who is, and who is to come. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Right. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Okay. And he sees the beginning from the end. Doctor. We must remember that God will not give us a challenge that we cannot handle. Hey. If it looks like we cannot handle it ourselves, it's because God wants us to take a step back and reconnect ourselves to him and depend on only him. So that with his power, we can overcome what he wants us to. And in the end, when we can accomplish it, we will say that it was God and God alone that was responsible. All right, all right, all right. What happened to the, inf to the Israelites shows us that we may be influenced by others wanting to give up and others that want to quit. Hallelujah. We should learn to be leaders and individuals who stand up for what we believe in. All right. And that we should not be swayed by the opinion of the crowd, no, by how large, no matter how large it is. That's right. In verse 8, if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. If the Lord delights in us, no matter how big the giant may be, he will bring us through. We can either turn back and doubt him and go back to the hardship, or we can stand firm and face the giants and go forward into the life God has planned for us. God is not a one-time God. If he can do it for them, he can do it for us today. If he can deliver David from his giants, he can deliver us from our giants today. Whether it be at work or at school or in personal problems we are facing, we have a God that does not see what we see from the human perspective. Because the flesh is weak, we see a giant as someone who can't be defeated. But God has created us big and small, and he will deliver us all into our promised land. In Exodus 14, verse 21 and 22, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Miracles are not something that only happened in the days of the Bible. Sometimes you read amazing miracles and you don't think that it could happen in today's time. But our God can do everything we see as impossible. If man can take resources from the earth and make everything we have today, phones that can communicate on the other side of the globe, Imagine what the God who created everything can do. It may not be literal, but he can part your Red Sea today. He can look where you see a raging sea and walk you across on dry land. In Jonah 1 verse 1 to 3, Jonah ran from what God had planned for his life because he was afraid. He was afraid because God told him to go to Nineveh and preach to them so that they could stop doing what was wrong and turn to the Lord to be saved. But, they, but he thought they deserved God's judgment for the way that they were living. And he was afraid to do what he was told to do. So God commanded a large fish to swallow him whole for three days and three nights. God took him to a quiet place by himself where he would not be influenced by the world and where he could only focus on the Lord. God assured him that he would not tell him to do something that he couldn't do. And he gave him, he gave him the courage and the strength to do the work that was given to him. My main point of this message is not to be intimidated or scared by what's happening around us. That instead we should lift up our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help, the Lord. We should trust in Him that He delivers through everything. He is the provider and He is the protector and He will continue to bless us throughout this year in 2022. Come on, God, finish, man. <laughs>
Sister Dawn and Brother Gladstone. Give them a good hand right here. <laughs> Things like this don't just happen accidentally. Somebody had to be putting in some time, and putting in some training, and putting in some all of that. Amen. Bend him towards the Lord's yeah. stuff. Yeah. Glory to God. What a blessing. <laughs> Can you imagine what he's going to be like? Talk to me, talk to me now. <clears throat> it's worth it. Sometimes we think our labor is in vain. As parents think oh, I'm wasting time, all that investment, all that money, all that sleepless night, all it. Just trust me. Right, come on. And then out of the blue, here comes God, and in a moment of time, he does what no other power can do. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Today we're going to give twice. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. Y'all got quiet there though, like, oh, what is he talking about? <laughs> All right, we're going to bring our tithes and put it into this basket that's where Dave is getting ready. Where Dave is putting on a game room. <laughs> It takes a while to break it down, you know, but it comes up quick. And then after that, it's better again to break it down. So, you know, I'm just telling my brother, I got mine under control almost. But I'm fighting at almost a losing battle. Five years of getting things done. I lost three pounds. I went to Jamaica. I spent one week. I got barred something, something, principally. Jesus, I put on eight pounds. <laughs> It took me five years to get off three and one week to put on eight. It's a fight, it's a battle, yes. but it's a battle we will win. Amen. We're going to be around here for a long time to do what has to be done. People like us don't need to die early. We got to live long mm -hmm. and prosper yes. Amen. and raise up sons like Mr. Ross who can Amen. deliver the word of God. And the brevity, you know, brevity, there are two things that I like in a sermon. Number one is the scriptural references. I'm not going to mention that. Brevity is one. Say what you got to say, then shut up. And then number two, continuity or flow. Yeah. You're going from one stage. You understand? You're not all over the place. You don't even know where you at. You said you're going to deliver a message on one thing, but you're all over the place. That's exactly what he did there today. He just did what he had to do, said what he had to say, gave his scriptural references, flow. And when he was done, pick up his mask and land him. <laughs> <laughs> your father's got to prepare all his messages. It's not an easy thing to get a message together. It takes work. It's an Andy said, amen. I can tell that. You feel that one, yes? Yeah? But you got to box scripture to scripture from place to place. Turn the page. Write it down. That one is not as powerful as what I'm trying to convey. I hope they understand. I don't think they understood. And when you finish delivering, you forgot something or you didn't say something the way you thought you should say. But uh, God be the glory. Mm -hmm. Great things he has done. Who's next, Sister Nandi? Who's next? Who's the next youth that's coming to bless us? Brother, Brother Whitney, it was your wife's suggestion and she's not even here. She got to pay a fine. <laughs> this is Sister Nandi's daughter, her eyes start to roll around in her head. I want to roll around and say, don't, don't, even, don't, don't even rush up to me. Don't, don't even come here. But, Find another place, find another bridge to walk across. And then we got uh, the dancer, we heard her sing, we saw her dance, but we never heard her, we heard her lead worship, but we never heard her deliver the word of the Lord. 
And then, of course, we got Sister Tuna, and she's looking at the wall, all of a sudden, she's looking away from it. When we are done here, you're going to be surprised at what the Lord will do. Amen. Some of you say, Amen, with skepticism, you're the one. It will be a blazing fire. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Griffith is laughing. Yeah, she's the one. <laughs> Let's stand together. Let's stand together. We're going to put our tithes in this basket here. And as you're coming, if you got your offering in your envelope, you'll, you'll pass to Sadon and give it to the guy in the middle. Give your offering to the guy in the middle. Give your tithe in the basket up in front. And uh, nobody is to tell him to give it back to the church. We don't want it back. We want to sow it to good ground. Yeah? You can tell it's good ground, right? Yes. He's standing here. I'm seeing fasting. I'm seeing prayer. I'm seeing days in the basement reading the word. I'm thinking, no, he's a young man. He don't have time for that. But with a father like Ross, he can have to fast sometimes and see the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know sometimes we parents, we feel, you know, it looks like we're cruel, but we're not cruel. We prepare you for what is ahead. We got to do a good job. All right, everybody. Your tights in the basket, your offering at Mr. Ross. Give him a high five, give him a handshake, give him a hug. Bless the Lord, give him a yeah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Shake the mother's hand too. Pass the father, don't worry. With you. <laughs> to God be the glory, great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gates for all to come in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Remember that from school days. 
you never forget it. So 31 days. So by Wednesday, it'll be the third. And I will be asking a question. What have you accomplished in January? What can you say, this I have done? Because you're going to see January again on the judgment. January 2022 will pass. You stand before God. What did you do in January? It was yesterday we celebrated New Year's Eve. And January is finished already. Where did the month go? But what have I done with the month? And I'm going to be teaching on time, the passage of time, what time is, what time means, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, we heard you teach it before, not this one. You know, it's like, not like Jesus. You hear one aspect and then another and another, and sometimes you think it's the same thing you're hearing because there's so much information. Time, what have you done with it? And, the, and one of the facts that I'm going to stress is that time can be redeemed, bought back. You can catch up. Huh? Yeah. Because when you, when you waste time, or you didn't do what you were supposed to do, given the time you were given. There's another uh, period in life when you have to discipline yourself in order to catch up on the time that was wasted. Yeah? So that, now it means that the time that you have now, instead of you sleeping eight hours, you can sleep five. Because you have to use that three hours to catch up with the hours that you lost. You understand what I'm saying? Time can be redeemed. You can get back time. You can catch up with time. But it will take some discipline on your part and mine. Because once you didn't quite do what you were supposed to do, you owe yourself to get that thing done anyhow. Don't scratch it off the, the page and say, you know, I'm not going to do that. Get your bucket list. This is what I'm going to do. Get your bucket list. This is what I'm going to do. These are the places I'm going to go. No matter what. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this. Up by the time year, the year comes to an end, these are the five things that I'm going to do in 22. And get them all accomplished. Somebody say discipline. Say discipline. 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 Management of time. Management of time. Say again. Say discipline. Discipline. Management of time. Management of time. Yeah, I'm going to be throwing that word management of time a lot. I'm just warning you up front. And discipline. You get yourself. Get things done. Don't just live. You know, make things happen with your life. Don't, don't blame anybody for what didn't happen. You are the custodian of your life. You're the, you're the director of your movie. As it's current, you write that script, you direct that movie. Nobody telling you what to do, it's your movie. And you're gonna be the star, ta-da! And when the movie is done, people must be cheering you because you have done all the things that you said you were going to do. Hello, hello, hello. I said, hello, hello, hello. Glory to God. I was reading up a little caption yesterday, and 99% of the millionaires have seven jobs that they do. They don't go to work, but they, you understand what I mean? They don't go to work. They're not nine to five people. Seven. That's what made them millionaires. Not the one thing that they do. They do two, three, four things. No, you, your boss is not going to make you a millionaire. No, no job wants you rich. Because if you get rich, you're not coming back to work. You, oh, you like No job wants you rich. They want you just enough. That's what Sister Pam said. J-O-B means just over bro. <laughs> she made me laugh that day. And then when I went home, I was thinking about it. I said, you know, I laugh, but it's true. You're just over bro. Paycheck to paycheck, we live it. Sometimes you don't have the paycheck yet. And it's designated to, to do this, do that, do this. How many you know what I'm talking about? Don't put up your hands, just think I. <laughs> hey, so you got to do two things. You got to do three things. You got to do it. You, you, it's just a got to, not like you want to. You're not greedy. Nobody's greedy. The average market is about $2,500. It's so little, the average rent. 17, 19, 26, 28. Huh? Yeah. Am I telling the truth here? Yeah. Yes. Then you got to do grocery. Have you noticed yeah. the cereal boxes bigger, the plastic <laughs> big and thick, and you got a quarter of, of the cereal at the bottom of the thing there? How many you know what I'm talking yeah. about? When I used to buy cheese, when I first came to camp, the cheese was like four inches thick, 
and 12 inches long, the cheese is 12 inches long and two and a half inches thick. They cut off inch and a half for the same price. Mm -hmm. So they're not jacking up the price, they're cutting down the amount of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So you now, and your children growing, and you know when children growing, look, especially if you've got boys, it's a terror. <laughs> you get up at night, you think it's a thief, you grab the baseball bat, I got two of them by my bedside. One of metal and one of wood. It gives one of name of Jesus, I believe in the angels, but I pack in my thing like Peter. <laughs> Crawling downstairs easy. It's <laughs> 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 Kevin. It's 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 the hard. It's Kevin. Rain in the fridge and all the night. So when you think you got groceries, <laughs> you gotta buy six loaves of bread to last the week. With boys. Some of you look said no, not six. You try that. <laughs> so you've got to you've got to earn more than you're earning, and the boss not gonna give you that. So you gotta find a side side job. A side hustle. Somebody say side hustle. Side hustle. Somebody say side hustle. Side hustle. This guy that is flying to the space now, not 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 Gates, the other one. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. He was 12 when he invented this little this little thing to do with computers. And sold two million copies in a short time. And became a millionaire as a, as a teenager. Elon Musk, 12 year old, dealing in business. Yeah? Don't just dibble and dabble with a sewing machine. Invent a nice style. Put your mother out one week, come. And she said, This is, uh, what's your name? Clarissa. Clarissa. This is Carissa's Delight, or Carissa's Couture. Oh, you, you understand what I'm saying? And then other people will order one or two different colors, name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look at you laughing at me. Don't just uh, have a habit that's taking money from you. Have something that you've got a side hustle. Somebody say side hustle. Side hustle. Say it again, say side hustle. Side hustle. I'm going to have a side hustle. Okay. Never mind what it is. There's one woman, she browses Kijiji. That's all she does, browse Kijiji. People, she's not looking to buy anything. She's looking at people that do things free, giving away free, you know after a while you get fed up with stuff, free stuff. She go and see it, if you like it, take it home, paint it up, nice it up, spray it up, and then put it on sale. Side hustle, she's selling hundreds and hundreds, and sometimes thousands in a month, with stuff she didn't buy for free. Just Kijiji, go and inspect the thing, it's in good condition, she can, Make it look even better and then put it up for sale for a very reasonable price. Because you got it free to begin with. Yeah. That's all they do. That's all. They, other people, they drive around their old truck, they pick up metal. That's all they do. And they take it to the place there and sell it for X amount of pounds. That's a side hustle. Somebody say side hustle. Side hustle. Yeah. Somebody say it again side hustle. Side hustle. Say it one more time, side hustle. Side, side hustle. hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, well, you got a side hustle? Always. 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 Sometimes two, sometimes three. Always. Can't depend on one. So, you do everything that that people. We always got to have a side hustle. And some of the people that I'm involved in with my side hustle, they hustle in me. <laughs> yeah, some of them think, you know, you know, we got in too much money now, so we gotta we gotta one person called me last week and said, you know, I got X amount, but here what I can do, you know, I can double it up, you know, because I want to invest in something that I got doing here. There's nothing I can do because I'm not there. So I gotta say, okay. <laughs> they hustle in my side also. How oh, you know the people they don't believe that you you ah oh, come on. You're gonna be better off than your parents. You gotta do more than they did. Yeah. And I'm telling you, they did a lot. And they're still not super rich. So you're gonna have to do what they do. It doesn't have to be as hard as they work, but you gotta work smarter than they work. Hello, you gotta work smarter, but side hustle. Mm -hmm. Side hustle. See, everybody, everybody. everybody. will have a side hustle. We'll have, we'll have a side hustle. Everybody. 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 That includes me. That includes everybody me. Everybody. Everybody. Have a side hustle. We'll have a side hustle. That includes me. That includes me. Everybody. Everybody. Gonna have a side hustle. 
going to have a side hustle, including me. Including me. You know, my grandmother used to tell me, son, there's dignity in labor. I said, this old lady is only now some of those things coming back to me, you know. And she was right, there's dignity in labor. Once you're working honest to get a dollar with your side hustle, don't be embarrassed when people see you doing what you have to do. Are you there? Yeah. There was a time I used to sell on the pavement. I used to sell out on the street, on the street yeah. corner. You? Yes, yeah. you. Yeah. On the street corner, mm -hmm. every day, yeah. on Monday to Saturday, yeah. selling different stuff to whoever passes by. Yeah. I was pretty good at it too. Pretty good at it. I knew children would pass by for school. I had some some toffee, some chocolate, some little tidbits. I give it to the children for free. <laughs> and I tell them, tell mommy you want a, one of these cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and the children go hold on, mommy's gonna start one crying. One one of those cakes. And then the next day I give them another one. And they go. They don't have to buy every day. After a while those children won't pass me for nothing. They start one crying. Mommy gotta buy a cake. Uh, uh, preacher man, brother. He like your, your say yeah, they got good taste. Yeah, no, the bright boy take it Side hustle. You you don't find ways to get things done. Mm -hmm. When I was selling on that street, I had a one minute rule. I at age 15, 16, I had a one minute rule. Nobody, no matter how long the line is, nobody is going to stay more than one minute and not get served what they come to buy. One minute, they gotta get it. Because there were days when the crowd was around, you know. Everybody buying. I collected money for us. <laughs> for us. I give them what they want quick. And then I made change. Make change. Make change. One minute rule. Find a way. Say side hustle. Side hustle. What am I trying to do now? I'm trying to get into your mind that you don't have to follow the system and do one thing. And get one money. Because that one money has to do 40 things. Mm -hmm. And the way the world is going, food prices are going to skyrocket above 12%. I used to pay 80 bucks for the day, and, and the, the tank of the gas used to be crammed past full. You know, it has a tendency. Now, I pay 100 bucks, and, and it ain't full yet. It just at full, but not, it don't go on over the other side. Same tank, the tank didn't grow. <laughs> so that is the, okay, all right, gas has gone up. Mm -hmm. And you know when gas goes, everything else goes. Yeah. So grocery will go, and everything goes. The money don't grow. I saw a guy, I'm closing now, I saw a guy, he was like uh, three feet tall, and the other guy was like six feet tall, and the other guy was marked minimum wage, <laughs> <laughs> and the tall guy was marked cost of living. <laughs> so minimum wage was telling cost of living. I'm two years older than you. How come you grow so far? <laughs> I look at that like cracked up with love. The cost of living had grown past minimum wage, even though minimum wage was older. That's just the reality. Side hustle. 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 So within the next three months, we look forward to see your your Carissa's couture. You got February, March, April. Between now and April, put out your mother or put out yourself. You know, sew your own thing and come with it and strut your stuff. Let us know when you come so we can clap and tear, set on a little red carpet, have a runway, and you can get to strut your stuff or your mother strut your stuff. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. God is a businessman. God believes in property. In the beginning, God created. The heaven and what? You notice, we, we have not even been introduced to God in a, in a second sentence. God already into real estate. <laughs> the heaven, then? You hear it. And the earth. And when he jumbled all of them, you know, man is God's most precious possession. God jumbled all of them. He didn't drum the earth. He left the earth. He still wants to own real estate. Say, I am like God. I am like God. Why did God? This year we're going to do a lot of brain stretch. A lot of brain stretch. A lot of brain stretch. By the time 2023, you'll be so changed, you'll look at yourself in the mirror and say, boy, 
I never thought you'd come. Hey! My goodness! This far. Woo! You know, we believe you, you got to be speaking spiritual things to get the anointing. As if talking about real estate is not an anointing thing. Hey! Glory of the Lord. I'm upon your life. In the name of your attack. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, man. Thank you. 